my diction's terrible today. Right. Three, two, one, go. Hello there, I'm Greg and I'm making a polymer clay ornament, a silicon mould of that ornament and multiple resin casts of that ornament, all for the first time. Not a great deal of intro required. Polymer clay is a plastic based clay that you harden by baking it in the oven. Silicon is a two parts liquid that doesn't stick to anything and forms a very highly detailed jelly around stuff and then you peel it off. And epoxy resin is a two part, also plastic, that you then pour into that silicon mold to make a copy of the other thing. I have an Etsy shop. Uh, if you've seen my Red Dwarf picture frame making video, you'll know that I I'm perfectly willing to put lots of time and effort into making multiples of something, but silicon moulds and resin casting are something I've wanted to try for a long time, just to make one piece multiples. And it's been a fun week. Now I know what I'm doing, I'm going to make multiples of them and they will be available if you'd like one. So I'm making what you might call a bas relief, which is a low, low level, low detail sculpture for an ornament of the popular children's characters, De Profits. So, quick haul video of what we've got. Some air drying clay, plasticine, and some polymer clay. I already did a test slimer, and my wife made a far more skilled pair of Koroks from Zelda. A silicon mat, there for mixing resin on, but not silicon moulds, because silicon sticks to silicon. As we will find out when we make a silicon mould. Some two-part silicon rubber, rubber, some two-part epoxy resin. A silicon mixing, that's a classic. I just needed to get the shop up to a certain amount. But it's a silicon mixing stick, so you can mix resin with it. Not, I nearly said silicon. You can't mix silicon with it. You mix resin with it. Little gold letters. These are bracelet charms. That's why each one is mounted on a loop that I'll have to remove. And then these are even tinier letters that are in little circles. This is gold mica powder, because it occurs to me if I'm trying to replicate a gold picture frame, I could make the whole thing gold, then just paint the picture part in the middle. This is Liquid Sculpey. Sculpey is a popular brand of polymer clay. This is the liquid kind. So I'm thinking, because I'm going to do a silicon rubber mould, to avoid lots of tiny nooks and crannies and cracks and things, my plan at the moment is to do a skin or a layer of either this liquid polymer clay, it might be a layer of resin, I might spray it with gloss varnish, just something to give it a consistent skin over the whole thing, which I assume will make the mould pull better. A silicon cup for mixing resin in, not silicon. I will need some butcher's string, can't hurt. I bought this silicon mould of an ornate picture frame, and I just think it's a bit small. So plan B, I have these two metal, Soft pictures of shiny birds. They were made in Italy, I know that. These are charity shop things I've had for years. That's my catchphrase, I've had for years and years. So these I've had for years and years. And what I want is this half, a landscape frame to fit three little characters in. So what I could do, if I had a bit more time and silicon and willing, um, I could do a cast of this whole frame, do another one, cut the casts in half, or I could just cut these in half. The chaotic neutral, the sort of Loki god of mischief part of me, I think wants to just cut these in half. But then the other side of me, the one of me on my other shoulder, who is, as you know, is very precious about keeping things forever. No, I'm going to cut them in half. This was their destiny. This is what they were always for. I feel the same when I um, collage an old book. It was its destiny. I get an oat cake immediately before doing this, and I've reached for this piece of cork and nearly bitten it about four times. So don't eat oat cakes before working with cork. An amusing bit. Dremel time. Uh, cut the sucker in half. I hate cutting metal. I'll never cut it without saying that I hate it. Two nice halves. Now this was not entirely a mistake, but it was a bit of a dead end. I wanted to fill the holes in the back of the frame and being what I thought was clever, because you can put the metal frame in the oven, I thought, well, I'll fill those holes in with polymer clay. But it pressed through the holes. So peeled it off washed off the grease and decided, right, this isn't going to go in the oven, so I'll just back the holes with a nice flat, thick piece of, I think, old photo frame cardboard. Find the letters for your frame, very easy, particularly if you play the shot backwards, like I'm doing here. That's how I do all my titles. I broke my nice snips, so these are dirt cheap ones that work just as well. Cutting the loops off the little letters, and then they're twice as thick as I want them to be, particularly because the back half goes, goes under 
because you don't want under undermines. So I'm just sanding them on 40 grit sandpaper and now they're half as thick with a nice flat back. Then again using my lovely cheap snips to, you wouldn't think of them for cutting card, but it's just an easy way to cut out this precise shape around the frame. And then to cover the gap in the top of the frame, I've got lots of little bangles and pendant backs and these are kind of ornate knobs. So I've cut off that tiny, tiny leaf and this tiny, tiny little clamshell off a pendant back and very proud of how seamlessly it covers that join. That is a, that's invisible mending. And this is possibly the highlight of the entire build. Nicely done. This again is just a piece of smooth cardboard to make a plaque for the forfeits to be stuck to. Then I'm using Milliput for the first time. This is the super fine, very smooth. You cut off equal parts, hardener and resin, and then it just tells you to mold them together for seven minutes, which I really like precise instructions. It doesn't say thoroughly, it says do it for seven minutes. So you smush, fold, and squish. Smush, fold, squish, and you just do that for seven minutes. You make a nice long white worm and then just put it into that gap. And it's a bit messy, but it's as smooth as plaster when it's dry and it's rock hard. So now we're moving on to the artwork. I trace the inside of that oval. It's 82 mil across and 62 mil down. And now because you can bake polymer clay multiple times, I'm making an oval biscuit, which I'm going to bake. So it's hard and then build my artwork on top of that, knowing that the artwork fits into the frame. Clock wipe. The first we've seen, but it won't be the last. Um, so I did this, I think about 140 degrees for like half an hour and it was fine. Undercooking it is worse than overcooking it because it comes out brittle, but you can burn it too. So just get it right. Here's where we're at at the start of day two. Uh, I filled this in with a piece of DVD cover plastic in the end because the thick cork was proving a bit too thick and interfering with the, the super glue and baking soda lumps that I've put on the back. So then to stop this from bowing when I stick things to it I've stuck a bit of wooden dowel across the back and sealed it all in with hot glue. A quick word in praise of Milliput. It does dry as hard as stone like everyone says. This is my leftovers piece because I had too much and it's... <clears throat> yeah it's quite tough. So here I, though I've backed the frame, I want it to be a certain thickness. Not as thick as the actual metal frame itself because that's too much resin so I'm just using more milliput to put a thick edge all the way around and then using my knife uh, ruining that blade but sacrificing a blade to conform it to the edge of the frame the silicon mat the artwork I prepared and a little flourish don't know why reference artwork I made in Photoshop out of the artwork the t-shirt artwork currently available that uh, my wife Kristina Baczynski made for me which I love. I took a photo of my 82mm oval, put that into Photoshop, made it 82mm across and then made this reference artwork. So I'm putting a Perspex photo frame over it and then you can build your shapes on top of it rather than just building blind. A thing I've seen other polymer clay people do is just use some Perspex to flatten down your sheets. Perspex is great because you can see what you're doing. There is of course no need for these all to be the right colour but my polymer clay came in lots of different colours, so it's quite satisfying as an artwork reference. And there I am. I'm thinking this is going to be my first bake point. I watched a YouTube video of sort of five or ten, you know, tips and tricks, things I wish I'd known, polymer clay type listicle videos. And one of them was, you don't have to bake it once. You can do layers, bake it, and then do more layers. So I sort of decided I was going to block in my colours and then add things like snouts, beaks, collars, trunks. But yeah, I'm pretty happy with this so far. It has the kind of naive outsider art look that I wanted, which also happens to be how much scale I have. Printing like stamp things is really nice. I love the eyes on the Miss Piggy type lady. Just use that tool that has a little star in the bottom. So I'm also thinking with her necklace and with their eyes, because you can bake metal. I've got a, a ball bearing chain that I kept off some curtain blinds. So I, I basically I've got some metal balls and little ball bearings. So I, I might include some metal details. Cutting off the ball bearing. Well, that was quite clever. I knew I saved them for some reason. And then this is the only time I actually use the liquid Sculpey is just to stick the eyes in. 
because it's a glue that you can bake and these are going to be baked once more whereas if I used super glue or PVA or something I don't know that you can bake those another clock wipe so while they're in the oven we stick the letters onto the plaque don't go left to right go from the outside to the inside and put a line where your middle point is it's between the P and the F of Puffits between the P and the F of Puffits and then I've got into super glue activator rather than just baking powder soda so these are now out of the oven and I'm sticking their faces on oh, I got so mad at myself for this this was the little chain that went round my nail clippers and I didn't need to cut it in the middle because it's got that connector I could have just taken it off cut off some and then reconnected it but doesn't matter and now because this isn't going to be baked again you can start sticking plastic things on so because this Miss Piggy surrogate has hexagonal eyes I'm using these tiny I mean tiny for someone who hates fiddly things which I do these are tiny um, nail art rhinestones so she's a rhinestone cowboy again if you use too much super glue you can you can cover details this small which I think maybe I did gloss lacquer so this is the skin I'm putting on, which will hopefully make it all consistent for the silicon to come off. So layer of gloss lacquer, another layer of gloss lacquer, probably four or five. So you lose some detail, but it's it's got a nice plasticky skin on it and set it in the sun to dry. I was at a wedding last night, so apologies if I have the voice of the Mr. Rons. OK, so we're going to do a silicon. So we're going to do a silicon mold today. This has now had... I think five or six layers of gloss varnish. So anywhere there's a crack or a join, like around the necklace or between two of the characters, or I wanted it to be quite full of lacquer. So it has a sort of low resolution edge. So there are no edges that you would need silicon to go under. I want it just to be a sort of smooth dome that the silicon mold will just pull off. So here, trying to be a bit of a clever clogs, I just rubbed some green felt pen around that metal oval to make a mark for where I need to cut the hole. And I'm sticking this flush. I thought I might be able to sort of pop it off again, but I think I'm just going to frame it up here somewhere because that thing is fused onto this bit of hardboard and that's my master. Little painting feet. I highly recommend buying some of these. Again, we don't make mistakes. We just have happy accidents, but it was too messy. Hot glue's not the answer. Hot glue's not the way. This has become a super glue and I put some baking soda anywhere there was a real gap under the edge. I've hot glued on the back. I don't want the silicon getting under and then down and through and round and all about. But this just became a super glue thing because getting hot glue in there and then sort of scraping it away to make a nice neat edge, it just it wasn't happening. So these will have a slightly cookie, rounded, biscuity edge, but I at least don't think there are any gaps in that super glue where silicon might seep under. I just don't want any under seepage. You can buy adjustable uh, silicon mold making, lots of little walls which click together, or you can just do it the cheap way and use hot glue and the, um, the foam board that you've already got. I'm using my Lego jig to make them straight even though that isn't necessary. One thing I do, I don't regret. No regrets, they don't work. I decided I'm just gonna use it all. But obviously I could have made a more octagonal mold and I would have wasted less silicon in the corners. So if, you, if you're going to really measure how much silicon you need and try and be sparing with your silicon, because it ain't cheap, you can adhere your mold more closely to the shape of your thing. So mixing, 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 mixing. I do recommend trying not to get either of part A or B spilt on the sides of the container because all the instructions talk, tell you about scraping your sides. You do have to scrape down your sides because if it's not thoroughly mixed, it will stay sticky slash greasy because you'll have little wisps of unmixed part A or B. So I mixed these for five minutes, I think. Now here, beautifully shot. You absolutely cannot see what I'm doing. I'm drizzling the silicon in and amongst the little gaps, just the, you know, the hole in the D and the P and the details around the F. I still get some bubbles there actually, but that's all part of the aesthetic. You'll see me do this more clearly later. Then this is sped up, I think about eight times. So pour slowly in a very fine stream on the lowest part of the thing you're casting and let it fill up. Sorry, I'm holding a cup of coffee. And <laughs> let it fill up um, and find its level. And they were never seen again. Absolutely haunting. Tap, tap, tap to get them some bubbles to the surface. Cover it again with a bit of that Perspex picture frame. Another clock wipe. Weirdly, that clock wipe actually happened in my real life. 
quite painful. No, this is about 24 hours. This is the next day. Cut your sides down and it pops off. It's very satisfying, it was very clean. You get little bits of um, flashing around the edge, little sort of wispy bits of skin that have just got under the cracks of things. But yeah, it's pretty great. That's it held up to a light. And because I think it'll be satisfying, that's the shot flipped around. They follow you around the room, don't they? That's a better shot of me drizzling around all the fine detail bits. Pouring again, a thin stream, pour slowly, pour on the low point, let it find its level. And then again, if you're trying to save silicon, you can use offcuts of silicon from old moulds. So I, just to test that these two different makes of silicon stick together, I cut the corners off my other mould and put them into the corners of this one. But again, I'm not saving anything here because I just poured both bottles completely in. Not thrifty, but effective. Resin. So earlier this day, I... Earlier this day... <laughs> so earlier on this day, I put water into the silicon mould and poured it out into a paper cup, just kind of eyeballing, OK, that much water is how much resin I need. That is gold mica powder. Stir it for about five minutes and just pour slowly. And it's slightly fingers crossed that it gets into all those letters and necklaces and weird shaped eyes and fur detail. This is some highly detailed stuff, it's quite a challenge. So this was uh, the secondary silicon frame that I just happened to have. So have something on hand to use up your silicon. Another clock wipe, another clock wipe. Again, this is the next day. This is lots of days. And yeah, it's a cheaper brand of silicon, but it popped off very nicely. Let's see it in front of the light. Let's flip it. It's flipped. Yeah, just as good as the other one. Okay, it's demolding time. It hasn't been 24 hours, but it has been 22 hours. Uh, so, in reverse order of importance or thing that worked, these old camera film lids. If you pour resin into a flexible plastic thing, will it pop out? It will not. That's why you use silicon and not plastic. Next up, the overspill frame. It's just a little spare thing. But if it was awesome, then that would be awesome. It's still got a bit of bend to it. The instructions say 24 hours to harden, 72 hours to cure, and it's scratch and heat resistant after 21 days. This feels like quite a moment. It's my first ever. Yeah, it's a bit bendy. It's got that oatmeal and raisin cookie you know the good cookies, the big kind where you get like five in a bag. It's about as bendy as one of them. The mica powder's not quite made it gold. It's more of a sort of glowing, slightly translucent, yellowy, caramelly colour. But you know, first attempt, very nice. Right. De Fuffits. Let's see. It's a momentous occasion. Have I already said that? Comes away from the edges very easily. It's still got a bit of give in it, although the thicker it is, the more cured it will be, because it's chemical cure. Hey! Yeah, actually, so because it's thicker, it's not bendy, like the thinner frame. I could bend it if I wanted to, but I don't. Yeah, it doesn't look like it's too bubbly. I wanted it to be slightly Christmas tat, kind of blow moulded, one piece of plastic. It's sort of the look I want. So for the letters to be slightly rounded out is fine. And it's not as heavy as the original, which is nice. So yeah, one and t'other. Great. My first missing shot, mvi underscore 1520.mov, we hardly knew ye. It definitely existed, because it, it goes 1519, 1521, but it was just me pouring two more resin moulds, and I must have deleted it. It's a rite of passage we all go through, but wow. And then this is those two moulds that I poured, and you can use a flame, either get a little chef's blowtorch, or this is just a, a gas lighter, to pop the bubbles as they arise for about the first 15 minutes, just pop back every sort of five minutes and pop your bubbles. Masking tape off. So once you prime it, you do see the bubbles. But this is okay. I didn't know it was okay at the time because it's all, we're all fumbling in the dark and we're prototyping and we don't necessarily know what we're doing. But this just a quite thick layer of decent quality, which does make a difference as we're also gonna learn, white acrylic paint just worked as a filler. So that amount of bubbles 
was fine. We start with our base colours, one of them's yellow, one of them's pink, and one of them's blue. I didn't film myself painting much because you sort of know how to do it and I was a bit nervous about my abilities, my skills. But yeah, what can I recommend? Use good quality high pigment or heavy body acrylic, which has lots of pigment in it, and you need far fewer layers. And I do recommend buying some very, very fine detail paint brushes, like I did, and they're very fun to use. So here we're pulling a Francis Bacon, the great, great painter Francis Bacon, who would do characters and then paint in the background colour around them to define their form. And that's what we're doing here. So my, my painting, I'm a lot like Francis Bacon, is basically what I'm saying. This was a fun day. I mean, there's, I can combine the feeling of fun and the feeling of not quite knowing what I'm doing or being good enough. This marker pen, permanent marker pen, it said, but his eyes have melted. I'm not going to keep using the this was a mistake graphic because <laughs> it gets depressing after a while. But yeah, this is supposedly a permanent marker pen and I loved these eyes when I drew them on. But this morning I've just a gloss varnished it as the final, you know, shiny coat. And one of them sort of, but it's fine. Every defect gets respect. Bit of antique gold paint there. Anyone know why that happened? I bought some more, sucker for punishment, but yeah, I was just going to add some gold to the frame, but I did it with a gold pen in the end. One final little addendum that might be informative. The finished product is drying outside with a layer of two layers of gloss on it. So that's done. I'm very happy with it. It's all painted up. I have cast some more. I mixed in quite a bit more mica powder, but also a little bit of very old antique gold paint. You can mix acrylic paint with resin, but they're particularly bad. I'll save them because these edge bits of frame are useful, but I've done two more. I did put in a tiny bit of white acrylic paint. Don't know why I didn't learn my lesson after those, but anyway. So, and these are much, much better. It's harder to see on the, uh, the clear resin, but you can tilt it to the light and see. It's not bubble free, but they're much smoother. So for the rest of my batch, I'm going to go pure clear resin, prime the whole thing, paint the whole thing, and not mix anything in for safety. Learning. Always learning. It's YouTube recommendation time, so... If you like watching people do things with polymer clay, but people who are actually really skilled, I recommend Zan Von Z. Uh, they make beautiful stuff, often based around very cheap and simple IKEA picture frames and boxes and drawers. And no talking, just nice music and polymer clay sculpting. Very skilled. Now let's take a look at the finished thing. Sorry the eyes have melted a bit, but it's fine. Stand down on flammable hotpoint fridge, de Fuffitz. Mr. Fuffitz, you! Ah! Rise hell, do stitch your eyes on. Istanbul Pokemon. Istanbul loves to crumb, it's cause of Fuffitz, you is on. Istanbul Glenda Jackson. Istanbul Band the Bomb. Istanbul Lindsay Lohan, cause of Fuffitz, you is off. Here we're gonna try! <laughs> so it's been fun. If you would like one of these, I might make ten or something, so they will shortly be available on my Etsy. My patrons will get first dibs on them, so why not consider following me on Patreon? I love my patrons very much, so if you want to be loved by me, uh, join Patreon. <laughs> I don't know. Not a ton else to say, apart from just thank you very, very much for watching. I really appreciate it. This week, let's say subscribe. So you don't need to like the video, don't need to share it with anyone, but do subscribe to my channel. I'm not annoying, I'm one of the good ones, man. Um, so yeah, if you would subscribe to my channel, that would be wonderful. Lots of love, and thanks so much for watching, and I will see you very soon. <laughs>